Good morning. I actually thought it was going to be freezing in my basement this morning and I'm burning up already. So hopefully I don't end up pouring and dripping with sweat. But anyway, don't have anything for you all this morning. Um, hope you all have a great weekend. Lord, when it Lord willing, we'll be back here on Monday morning. Mm, I don't know. Enjoyed my groove and gossip with my family yesterday. Definitely great time. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this morning, July 23rd, 2021. Father, waking up to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you just for all of the things that you do for us, Father, that we don't even realize, Lord God, the protection at night, Lord God. Watching over us, keeping us, Lord God, allowing us to, to breathe, Lord God, without even thinking about it, Father. We come to you on this morning, Lord God, asking that you would teach us, Lord God, um, that something might be said, Father, that would spark something and someone that's listening, Father, and have them to think about um, things of you, Father, or to minister to somebody because of it, Father. Just asking, Lord God, that I not be the only one that gets something um, from this, Lord God, but that you would just just give others revelations as well, Lord God, and have them desire, Lord God, to dig deeper into your word, Father. We come to you on this morning asking that you would guide my tongue, Lord God, um, help me not to get tongue-tied, Father, and that the words of my mouth, Lord God, the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Yesterday when we ended, we did um, read verse 6 of Acts chapter 17, but we're going to start back with that again and go through 9 and then get started. So Acts 17, 6 through 9. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. All right. So they had that no knock search warrant going on. Right. And they went ahead and they went into um, the home of Jason, but they didn't find Paul and Silas. And so they drug Jason and it says certain brethren unto the rulers. And so verse seven um, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. We mentioned that yesterday. Nobody's going to talk about Caesar, all right? You're not going to be talking about that you're greater than him or any of that. So that was their accusation so that it would stir up the people. Verse 8, and they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. All right. I guess these people weren't as strong. They're not renting their clothes. Right. Um, verse 9, and when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. Well, this security is actually a deposit of money until a case is decided. All right. So the other, I don't know if it's the others or if it's just one other person that they did it with, but they're making Jason pay in order to to get his freedom, which I don't know why they didn't do that to like Paul and Silas, um, the other groups instead of beating them and putting them in prison. But anyway, they go ahead and they take money from them and then they let them go. Verse 10, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. All right, Paul, Anyway, yeah, him in, in this synagogue, but they sent him away at night. So wherever they were lodging, Paul and Silas, um, folks knew, him, but they wanted to go ahead and get them out of the city. So they send them away at night and they send them unto Berea. And that's actually pro pronounced Beroya, Beroya. It means well watered and it's also a place in Macedonia. Mm, just lost my spot. All right. So, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. 
Verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. All right. So they weren't all in an uproar. How dare you bring this religion to us? They actually, uh, the soil was, was ripe, I guess I want to say, for planting the seeds of Christianity. And so they received it and it says, and search the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. That's what I tell you all to do. Doesn't matter what I read, how I quote unquote craft it, bring it to you, what have you. Read the scriptures for yourself to make sure that what I'm saying is is the way that you see it as well. The Holy Spirit is not going to contradict himself, right? And I don't know if you've ever heard anybody say be a Berean. This is what they mean. The Bereans search the scriptures. They didn't just take the pastor's word for it. Or if you've seen Berean Christian Bookstore, the reason it's Berean is so that you can search the scripture. It has tools to be able to do that. Verse 12, therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. It's interesting because this is like the opposite of the way that they put it over in, I think, Acts 16. Yes, it says, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. So still women and Greeks, but they switch it around. Nevertheless, a lot of them believe. Verse 13, but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. My question is, don't these people have jobs? I mean, seriously, can Paul not go someplace where the paparazzi are just like after him? So these Jews, they come, it's approximately... 45 miles between Berea and Thessalonica, okay? So they come to where Paul is as well because they want to stir up the people. Verse 14, and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. They're saying, you know what? We ain't even giving y'all a chance to arrest them, to bring them to trial, to beat them, to put them in prison or what have you. Paul, you just need to go. All right. And Paul's got to be feeling some kind of way like that. Can't I stay anywhere? Don't I fit in anywhere? But he keep going into them synagogues. So anyway, and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. What sea are we talking about? Anytime that they reference the sea back in this day, it was one of two seas that they meant. It was either the Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. Well, the Red Sea is not close to Berea. The Mediterranean Sea is close to Berea. So they're going to make it seem like, you know what, well, we're going to take him down to the Mediterranean, put him on a boat. But Silas and Timothy stayed um, still in Berea. Verse 15, and they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. All right. So the person who is taking Paul where he's taking him actually ends up taking him to Athens. All right. Not down to the Mediterranean to put him on a boat. They take him to Athens. And then when Paul gets to Athens, he sends word back saying, hey, tell Silas and Timothy to come on with me. And they depart with all speed as, as quickly as they can get there. So where's Athens? Um, it is in Greece. It means uncertainty. And in Greek, it's pronounced Athenai. Athenai. All right. Verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. I know that I bother folks with this, but my spirit can't deal with certain things either. And 
um, I, I get this, you know, talk about being disturbed. Uh, I get this. TV does that a lot with me. Movies do that a lot with me. But I saw an article yesterday where this female at the beach was upset and ticked off because there was a guy on the beach with a sign saying, can you dress more modestly? Modestly. And I get that because if I'm bringing my 11 year old son to the beach because we're just having a family day, I don't want him sitting over there lusting over these women that don't have on any clothes, you know? So I get that. But this woman was ticked off that this dude had this sign, right? So Paul is here and it, while he's at Athens, he was like, oh my gosh. This is Sin City. Go ahead on Las Vegas, right? And I mean, we have more than, than just Las Vegas here in the U.S. where the whole city is just thriving off of some things that, according to the Bible, should not be. It's verse 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. So he is discussing he anybody that gives him an ear. I don't care if they in the synagogue, if they're in the marketplace, I don't care if they give him an ear. He's talking to them, you know, and that's what true witnessing is about. I was talking to a lady yesterday and we were talking about how we just keep saving the same people. You know, you walk into a church and it's like nobody in there smells of alcohol. Nobody in there reeks of marijuana. Nobody in there has a skirt riding up their behind because we're not going out to the hedges and highways and compelling them to come. We are just saving the same people that are right there in church. It shouldn't be that way. We should be concerned about the ones that are in the state now that we used to be in. And that's where my heart is. You know, I look at the things that I used to do and I constantly thank God for saving me from myself. But I need to be out there saving those who are going down that same road. And so Paul is in the marketplace and that's what he's doing. And verse 18, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. All right, these Epicureans and Stoics researching them. It was a lot of information. Instead of writing it down in my book for notes and taking up the rest of the book, I went ahead and printed off some information, and I just want to read a, a couple things about who it is he is encountering. It says, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics. And so Epicure Epicurus was an ancient Greek philosopher who founded a highly influential school of philosophy, Epicureanism. All right. And um, he turned against the Platoism of his day and established his own school known as the Garden in Athens. He and his followers were known for eating simple meals and discussing a wide range of philosophical subjects. He openly allowed women and slaves to join the school as a matter of policy. For Epicurus, the purpose of philosophy was to help people attain a happy, tranquil life characterized by peace and freedom from fear and absence of pain. He advocated that people were best able to pursue philosophy by living a self-sufficient life surrounded by friends. He taught that the root of all human neurosis is death denial and the tendency for human beings to assume that death will be horrific and painful, which he claimed causes unnecessary anxiety, selfish, self-supportive behaviors, and hypocrisy. According to him, death is the end of both the body and the soul and therefore should not be feared. He taught that although the gods exist, they have no involvement in human affairs. And his philosophy died out in late antiquity, uh, subject to the hostility of early Christians. All right, so that's him. Real quick, give me a couple more minutes. Um, we'll just talk about what Stoicism is. 
and then we will end. Stoicism is a school of Hellenistic philosophy, all right? Remember those Jews that spoke Greek. Founded by uh, Zeo of Sinetium in Athens in the early third century BC, according to its teachings as social beings, the path to happiness or blessedness is found in accepting the moment as it's presents itself by not allowing oneself to be controlled by the desire for pleasure or by the fear of pain, by using one's mind to understand the world and to do one's part in nature's plan, and by working together and treating others fairly and justly. He was known for teaching that virtue is the only good for human beings, and those external things such as health, wealth, and pleasure are not good or bad in themselves, but have value as material for virtue to act upon. Um, he, uh, Stoics thought the best indication of an individual's philosophy was not what a person said, but how a person behaved. To live a good life, one had to understand the rules of the natural order since they brought thought everything was rooted in nature. Um, it experienced a decline after Christianity became the state religion in the fourth century AD. All right, so Christianity is the reason that both Epicureanism and Stoicism ended up dying out. We will go ahead and we will pick up with 18, Lord willing, on Monday. All right. Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking and praising you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, again for your word. We thank you for the preservation of your word. We thank you, Father, that we are able here in America, Lord God, to go to bookstores, Father, to study, Lord God, and search the scriptures to see what it is that you have to say, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that through Jesus Christ, we can come directly to you. Ask your Holy Spirit that resides within us to rise up and to teach us, Lord God, to lead us and guide us, Father, with your word, to make things plain and clear, Father. We ask that you would be with everyone leaving their homes on today, Lord God, and be with those that are inside their homes, Father. We see people getting shot, Lord God, through windows, Lord God. We see buildings collapsing, Lord God. So just because they're in their home doesn't mean they're safe, Father. So we ask for your protection, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I love y'all. Again, Lord willing, I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.